It's no secret that Japanese mayonnaise is one of my favorite things ever. And I'm gonna show you 10 things to do with it you never thought of. Hi, look, I realize it's day two of viewer recipe month, so we're gonna take a quick little detour just for today, but for something very special. Look, I wouldn't do this to you if it wasn't really worth it. So stay right there, here it comes. We're still giving away a knife, so watch for that. Ready, here we go. I'm Sam the cooking guy, and I don't always use mayonnaise, but when I do, I prefer QP. Japanese mayonnaise. Remember the movie Lost in Translation with Bill Murray doing the scotch commercials in Tokyo? I want to be there with this. I love it. And today, 10 things that you can do with this outside of an egg salad sandwich, which by the way is elevated to a whole new level when you use QP. It's that good. If you saw one of our videos in Tokyo, I ate egg salad sandwiches from all three of the big convenience stores to determine which one was best. And Max, whose was best? Ah, I can't even remember. Was it Lawson? No, I think it was 7-Eleven. Ah. 7-Eleven has an excellent one. Here's today. 10 things that you can make with this. And some of them you might be like, Wait, what? Is he putting it in there? QP is going to become your new best friend like it's my best friend. Before I start, I'm going to tell you one thing. We've got something very fun to announce in this video. I don't want you to go anywhere. Did that get them to stay in their seats? Stay in your seat. You're going to want to know about this. Meanwhile, remember the beginning of Wizard of Oz, the storm and all the wind? It's feeling like that here. Might be a little noisy. I'll take the wind, though, over you know who next door yelling and screaming. Ten things. It's going to go pretty quick. I'm going to start with one of my favorites. Auntie M, Auntie M. And that would be breakfast. And right now you're thinking QP, mayo, and breakfast? How's this going to work out? Stand by. We begin with a bowl and three eggs cracked in. We season with a little salt and pepper, and then we give it about a tablespoon of QP mayo. And I know you're thinking, Sam, come on, have you lost your mind? Oh no, this is gonna make it creamy and wonderful. So just mix away. Then it's cooking time. And with your pan warm, a little shot of oil, could be butter, but I'm a fan of oil these days. In goes our eggs. And we start to mix, and you can see they're starting to set right away. I'm a fan of soft scrambled eggs. That means they're not hard, and I like them when they're creamy. And boy, is the QP gonna work some magic here. Look, it's been in what, 30 seconds? And we're there. Let's get a plate. And out we go. Innocent looking, I know. Two things, little fresh ground black pepper and some chives. And what the QP has done to this has just made it so much creamier, so much nicer, so much better. And I'm ready. Look at them, look. This is just, I just, I'm just in love. The difference between this and not QP male eggs, mm, they just melt. This is number one. Ready for number two? Because while we're in the breakfast frame of mind, we'll make some biscuits with only three ingredients and guess what one of them is? Yes, QP. Okay, we've been teasing this and I want you to know that we're excited to tell you that QP, QP has agreed to give our viewers 100 of the 500 gram, the original QP from Japan. 100 of you guys are gonna get one of these just by go, excuse me, hello? Yes, this is, speak, yeah, it's QP. We're, you're right, we're doing it right now. Well, Max and Chance are going great, oh no. No, we're about to 100 of 250. That's very, gen thank you, thank, thank you. All right, I'll tell them, it's perfect timing, we're doing this right now, okay. All righty, see ya. Well, check that out. They've upped it to 250. 250 of these, the 500 gram. The things you can do with this, all you have to do is you just go to qpgiveaway.com and you're gonna... Oof. Hello? You, yep, still here. No, oh no, the honor is ours. So, you should see the f smiles on the, yeah. 500, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Certainly, I'm never gonna say, the audience is gonna be, of, of course. Okay, yeah, I'm just finished, just finishing out now. Okay, thank, thank you. Yeah, oh no, this is gonna be, uh, oh, okay, bye-bye. 500, <sighs> they're very nice. 500 of these, what do you do? Q 
qpgiveaway.com. You're gonna, the hell is that? Is that a helicopter? I think it is. You hear that? It's not just a helicopter, but why is he just hovering right over the house? What the hell is that? Why is it just hovering there? What the? You tell me, does it look like they're lowering something? Oh my god, I think there's <laughs> something coming. They're, they're lowering something? They just lowered a QP bottle, and you know what it says? It says a thousand bottles. They're giving away a thousand bottles of this QP mayo, the 500 gram OG from Japan. Oh my God. Right, cut that so the helicopter can get out of here. Yeah, sorry. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's sayonara, arigato. Wow, a thousand of these. You guys, come on, right now, qpgiveaway.com. Put your name in. You want to be first because after a thousand, then it's uh, not. So, what a day we're having here. What a day. All right. That's fantastic. Love you guys. See if it's gone. All right. Uh, back to the cooking. We begin with the start of our show a half a cup of QP mayo, followed up by a cup of milk. And this we will whisk together. When it's fully incorporated, we add two cups of self rising flour. I'll switch to a spoon and mix it together. When you're all mixed up, Let's get something to put it on. I'm using a silpat. It could be parchment, but then we just take some of our batter and on we go, just like that. Continue till you're done. If you're expecting one of those perfectly shaped grandma biscuits, this is not for you. But if you're looking for a super simple, ridiculously delicious biscuit, rich, amazing, this is for you. My oven's at 400 degrees. These guys are going in for about uh, 25 minutes until golden brown and purdy. And when your 20 to 25 minutes of baking time is over, that's what you've got. Oh my, look at these kids. Light, it's a biscuit, just like that. Three ingredients, come on, let's have a bite. Three ingredients, stop it. I mean, I've struggled at making biscuits. Getting them perfect, cutting them the right way, doing this, baking soda, baking powder, forget all that. Self-rising flour, milk, QP. this is it. But as I like to say, don't stop here because wait till you see the next one. Another favorite, you know when you make a pie and you put puff pastry on the top of it, you usually beat an egg with a little water to brush it over the top. It makes it prettier. When you do that, I use about one tenth of that egg and it makes me crazy. Not that eggs are super expensive, though they're actually getting there. Here's a better one. Same results, easier, less expensive. It's QP, watch this. That is a little pie with puff pastry on the top. It could be chicken inside. It could be beef stew inside. It could be apple cobbler inside. This is my QP. This is my brush. Watch this move. And I know you're sitting back going, Sam, I know you said there'd be a couple things that I'd be raising my bro at, and this is definitely one of them. Well, listen, it's just fat. If you think about it, it's just fat. Like an egg is just fat. So we just brush all the way around as you would. Then because we want the steam to come out, we do a little doop doop in the top. This now goes into your oven until it's brown. You were expecting that, right? And when the cooking's up, that's what you get. Tell me that's not one of the most beautiful things ever. It's one of the most beautiful things ever. I told you not to tell me that. Golden, brown, delicious, crispy, amazing. Doesn't matter what's inside it. What matters is what you've done to the outside. And what you've done to the outside is, well, it's rather amazing. Who wants a piece of chicken? Number four. Thank you, Chance. This is a chicken leg quarter. That's the leg. That's the thigh. It's called a chicken leg quarter. And watch what we're going to do with this. Two ingredients. Three, counting the chicken. Here's our QPE, ready to be brushed on. And away we go. And you want to do a nice job, nice even coverage all the way. QPE's like the wonder ingredient. And when you've got her all beautifully mailed up, we're going to season it. You could use anything you want. I'm going to use a little bit of this sweet hot rub. We've done this before. It's on the website. Just a really nice coating all the way. You don't need any salt and pepper. This has got seasoning enough for everyone in it. And when you're done, into the oven, 425, till it registers about 180 degrees. And voila. And what does the QP do? The QP helped keep the meat super tender, got it crispy on the outside, and gotta say, rather beautiful. What do our shirts say? Fat means flavor. What is mayo? Mayo is fat. And now, the taste test. Really more like a taste bite. 
Oh my gosh. Super tender, juicy, nice crispy skin. But it's just the moistness of the whole thing. That's a perfect bite. That's a TV bite right there, isn't That's it? That's what I was thinking. It's an advertising bite right there. Holy goodness is this good. I want to eat all this. I'll let the, the boys have a few bites, but we're moving on to shrimp. Wait till you see this move. These are large shrimp. They're 16 20s. That means there's between 16 and 20 per pound. It's one of the best appetizers ever. Here's what we do. A little bit of oil, a little of our BFF, and we do the other side. And then on we go directly on the flat top like this. Little sizzle, I love it. Best party trick ever. I'm gonna tell you, have these skewered before your company comes over, and then they can do this. And if you don't have a 30 inch round flat top like I do, just a big cast iron pan will work. Do them on your grill, you'll be happy no matter how you cook them. Shrimp don't take long. You can see we're already getting there. You're probably about a minute aside. The fun part comes when we flip them. Feel free to turn them up on their edge for a few seconds before you flip them. And you notice I like skewering them long ways as opposed to the C shape. I don't like the C shape. Now it's time to go to the uncooked side, so here we go. Oh, glory be. You don't know what's about to happen, but I do. They're gonna get a little less time than on that first side, but here's what we do. We come back with our brush and our QP, and we're just gonna brush the tops of each one of these. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, till you're all done. You want a decent amount. And now you season the top. And I'm using a Japanese seasoning called togarashi. It's a, uh, it's a pepper blend. You could use anything, barbecue seasoning. You could use smoked paprika. You could use cumin, whatever direction you want to go. You want them to be sort of Mexican inspired. All good. Go with cumin, go with garlic powder, that kind of stuff. Now, last but not least, the really fun part is we take a little torch and we just torch the top with the mayo to help it burn in a little bit and amplify the flavor. And when I'm finished torching, these shrimp are ready and off they come, just like this. And here we are. You tell me your friends and family aren't gonna be like amazed by how beautiful these are? Because I'm amazed and I make them all the time. There's no sense in just looking at them, is there, fellas? I think I need to eat one. Food on sticks, one of my favorite things. Shrimp, one of my favorite things. Shrimp with QP, torched. Best thing ever. Damn, best thing ever. There's just something about these that are amazing. And look, yes, I'm a huge QP fan. Could you use regular mayo on these, Max? Yeah. No, you couldn't. No. They wouldn't be the same. I was testing you. He was testing me, no. QP is about flavor. Regular Western mayo is about just a gloppy compound. It's just a, it's just a, a gloppy compound. The whole thing's together. Add a little moisture. It's all fat. So if you're going to add fat, add a fat with flavor. Add a fat with flavor. Regular Western mayo is made with whole eggs. QP, just egg yolks. Hence, the deeper color. Hence, the better flavor. These are mashed potatoes that I'm warming up. And unless you like your mashed potatoes, uh, oh, I don't know, dry and lumpy, maybe you do. But if you don't, I'm gonna show you a fabulous trick and it's the addition of some QP. But while I'm here, let me show you something. Flip the top and a little QP comes out, Doo. like that. Take off the top and there's the star tip and bulk comes out. So we're gonna give this a couple tablespoons like that and mix it in. And the creamy level of these just went up about five times. Creamier, yes, but also it's that added flavor that really makes them better. And when they're all warmed up, put them in a little bowl and try them. Before I put these on the plate, just look. That creaminess, that's from the QP. Oh, so just a little on Max's favorite plate. Like that, tiny little salt and pepper. And while I've got these still from the eggs, a little chive. Those are mashed potatoes that even your grandmother would be happy with. Sorry, Grandma, it's time to put the lumpy, dry mashed potatoes on the shelf and introduce you to something else. Sorry, Granny. Okay, hello, beautifully creamy mashed potatoes that I want to eat all of. Talk about creamy. There was no chewing. That was all swallowing, oh my goodness. But it's the flavor, again, I'm telling you, yes, it's what it does, but it's the flavor of the QP that you will not get with another mayo. But while we're in the uh, potato zone, how about some super crispy roasted potatoes? These are cut baby potatoes. Look how cute they are. If it's really tiny, I'd leave it. If it's bigger, I'd cut it. Purple ones, red ones that are still white inside, all good. Here's how this goes down. You know the most important ingredient to this dish after the potatoes is some kewpie, of course. Now you can season any way you want. Here's what I'm gonna use. Little onion powder, little smoked paprika, a little Italian herb blend, 
and a little garlic powder. And this, we will mix. Toss them well. And when you're done mixing, baking sheet, on they go. Try and get them in a single layer. These get popped into a 425 oven till they're crispy and amazing. And after the requisite time and put in a pretty bowl, look, that gorgeous, crispy, deeply colored, and fantastic tasting. And a little of this, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just upped your potato game in a way that regular mortals wouldn't even know about. It's pizza time. And before you say to me, Sam, how can QP possibly aid in the making of a pizza? I say to you, just sit back, Sparky, and pay attention. We're gonna start with the sauce. And here's where the QP comes in, like this. What was that, half a cup max. Next up, about a half a tablespoon of ginger paste. Same of garlic paste. About a teaspoon of gochugaru. That's that Korean pepper blend that I'm very fond of. So great, could be anything if you didn't have it. Smoked paprika, cayenne, that kind of stuff. Little hit of our BFF, and this we will mix. When you're all mixed up, we get our crust. And in this case, I'm using what's called a pinza romana. It's this flat bread-esque, thin pizza crust-esque type-esque thing-esque thing. Anything you want. You got a raw pizza dough, use that. You want to use a flat bread, use that. Or this pizza romana. Now, of course, this beautiful sauce, on it goes. Couldn't be any easier. QP for a pizza sauce. What is the guy thinking? Oh, the guy's thinking about great tasting food. That's what he's thinking of. We're there. We give it a little shredded mozzarella. Not a ton. And now some shiitakes that I have already cooked in a pan with just a little bit of oil. My fear is if you put them on raw, all the moisture is gonna come out and it's gonna sabotage your hard work and you don't want that. So on they go. One last thing, a little good parm over the top. My oven's at 500 degrees. The crust is already cooked. We just need the whole thing to warm up, get a little crispy, the cheese to melt, and we're eating big. You ready for this, boys? Whoa, look at this. Look at this. Of course, the only thing it needs is this. Just, and this is cilantro. You know I love parsley, but I always love a little green, and that is fantastic looking. You want to give it a little drizzle of good olive oil like this? You do that. You don't want to? What do I say? It's your food. You do what you want. But look at what our QP has done here. Goodness gracious. Well, let's cut this. Who wants a piece? Dang it. Look at this. But once again, in this world, it's not necessarily about looks, it's about taste. It smells insane. Oh. Mm -mm. There's no one on the planet that would take a bite of that and go, is this mayonnaise? Because I'm not a fan of mayonnaise and I don't like it. Mayonnaise haters would be like, what just happened? What am I eating? What is that sauce? Why is it white? What's on this? And that's when you get to either say, or keep it a secret. It's my little special pizza, Never mind. How do we feel about fish? Boys, fish? Yeah. Let's have a little fish. That is a little cod filet, a sad, dry looking one. And that was intentional because what the QP is gonna do to this is gonna make it moist and amazing. So watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our QP and we're gonna brush it generously, top sides. And when you're all brushed up, it gets a tiny bit of our BFF and then this, and this is crushed almonds, some panko breadcrumbs, a little parsley, and some garlic powder, that's it. This is our nut crust, and this we'll put over the top. The stuff that falls off the edge, no big deal. I mean, like, it could be anything. You like cashews, use cashews. You wanna use peanuts, use peanuts. What, are, what am I? I'm a, I'm a guide. I'm your food tour guide, showing you your options. My oven's at uh, 400 degrees. This is gonna go in. It's gonna take about 15 minutes. It is gonna be beautiful. And after our time, look at what we have. Let's get this kid off. Try not to mess him up. Come on, there you go, baby. There you go. Steaming, oh, it's majestic. Vanna White turns, look at that. And the smell from here. I can't wait to have a bite. So let's just, it's beautiful. Look at this. It's just beautiful. Okay, one little bite. How's one little bite gonna hurt anything? Oh man. I err on the medium rare side when it comes to fish. I like to cook fish like this to between 100 and a quarter and 130 degrees. It's gonna be hot and delicious. Mm. Mm. I used a small dry 
sad looking little piece of fish to make a point. And the point is, is that the QP on the outside just adds extra moisture really to the whole thing. It is, it's luxurious, cooked nicely, but really, remember, fat is flavor, mayo is fat. QP is delicious fat. So if you're gonna use fat, use one with flavor. That made all the difference in the world. I know this kind of recipe, people use butter, melt it on top, and then put the nuts and stuff on top of that. That's a mistake. This is the way to go. And if you like a filet like this, pretty soon you're gonna like a whole fish on the grill. Fish is one of the biggest problems on the grill because it sticks. Not when you do what we're about to do. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a whole branzino. It's a little sea bass. I've stuffed it. Lemon, cilantro, little seasoning in there. Now we're gonna take care of the outside. And here's where it gets fantastic. Because fish is notorious for sticking on the grill. And when it sticks, it rips the skin. It makes a mess of it. And this is a beautiful little fish. We don't wanna hurt it. So we're gonna take some of our QP and just brush it all over. It's like a wonder ingredient today. We'll say the only part I feel bad about is this. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. You have no idea how sorry I am. Putting mayo on his face? Yes, but I'm doing it respectfully. Okay, this guy's gonna go mayo side down, and when it's down, I'll put mayo on the other side. Now we go to the grill. Okay, last thing, just a little of our BFF. Respectfully dust it over the top, and on we go. Fantastic. We're gonna cook it till it's about 135 degrees. Internal, so you know, five, six minutes aside. I'm gonna put mayo on in a bit, but for now, if you want to put weights on it, just so it gets an even pressure down on the grills, go ahead. It's not crucial, but I do it because I like toys. All right, so I'll tell you what, let's give it a 45 degree turn. I'm gonna take these guys off. And here's a trick. You wanna get underneath the fish. You don't wanna disturb the flesh. A carving fork is the ideal thing to use, especially if it's a Sam the Cooking Guy one. So you go like this, come under. All we're gonna do is just pick up our buddy, go like that and like that. Put these guys back on. It's been about uh, two and a half, three minutes. We'll give it another couple minutes and then we'll flip to the other side. And we're there. So off come the weights. We brush again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, I'm very sorry. Little of our BFF. And now watch how easy this flips. Remember, no sticking. And that is beautiful as. That's what you want. You want skin that's starting to get crispy like that. Basically five minutes aside and you got a gorgeous, perfectly cooked fish that hasn't stuck at all. There's no tricks here. It's not a stunt rubber fish. This is hot. I can't hold my hand there for more than a couple seconds. This is not magic. Well, yes, it's the magic of the QP. That's what it is. All right, let her finish up. We'll take her off. All right, who's ready to see our little guy? Yeah. There we are. Look at that. There is your very own Branzino, ladies and gentlemen, that didn't stick one iota because of the addition of the QP on the outside. And not only did it keep it from sticking, but it amplified the flavor, richness, deliciousness, everything fantastic. I mean, look at this guy. Look, can you see here? Look at this perfect flesh. Look at that. Beautiful, it's beautiful. That should be my bite. I love some skin, I love the inside. I love how it's beautifully cooked, but I know how rich and extra special it's gonna be. Listen, our friend Brad, whenever he's in New York, goes to the same Italian restaurant, he always orders the same thing. I'll have the Branzino, please. He probably orders it like that. And I'm sure it's delicious, it's why he always has it. It's not as good as this one, I'm telling you. Off the grill. It's the QP that kept it from sticking, but also enriching the entire thing. It's so good. And what have we learned today? Chance! QP works on everything. QP works on everything. It Most does. Most versatile condiment. Most versatile condiment. Thank you, boys in the back. A thousand of these are being given. How do you get one? If you're just joining us, qpgiveaway.com. Fill it out. But get going, because they're going to go. Because everybody wants this. This is made in Japan. This came a long way to make your food life way better. All right, love you guys. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Let us know in the comments what you want us to make, and we will. I'm sounding like my mother-in-law right now, and I don't know why. Damn, is this good. All right, love the fact that you guys are here. Get some QP, make everything we made today. The recipes are below.